Welcome to this lesson on dimensional analysis, sometimes called the factor label method. What we are going to do is convert from one unit into another by multiplying any given number by conversion factors. Conversion factors are just fractions where the numerator and denominator are equivalent, but represented by different units. So if you can think of like 12 inches and a foot, they represent the same length, but we're measuring them one in inches and the other in feet. So um, they have different magnitudes, like the number is different, but the unit is also different. But in reality, they're measuring this literal same distance. So they are equivalent, even though they may not look like it. So what we want to do here in this example is turn um, years into seconds. They're both measuring time, so this will work out just fine. We are allowed to convert um, time into other units of time. And that's what we're going to do here. Now, in chemistry, we wouldn't often use time just because um, we don't work in time a lot. Uh, most of the time you will see this happening in terms of grams and moles and liters and things in stoichiometry, which is measuring a quantity or amount of stuff. And um, I will certainly be doing more of that when we get into the stoichiometry practice. This is kind of just like a basics of dimensional analysis here. Um, this is a really good starting point and time is actually a pretty good use for this because we know time and its equivalent values. Chemistry can get a little bit muddy, so we'll address that a little bit later. Okay, the first thing we wanna do in any of these problems is take the given amount, and some people will leave this blank, others will put it over one, because given amount, anything over one is itself, so 15 years over one, it's just itself. Then what we need to do is multiply by conversion factors, two values equal to each other, so it's effectively the same as multiplying by one over one. Um, the idea here is that we're just moving this along through the math to figure out the um, quantity in the new unit. Now, as I do this, I want my unit that's currently on the top to be canceled in the next multiplication set because I want to change units. And if there's one on the top and one on the bottom, then I am able to cancel them. So I'm going to use a conversion factor that includes years, which is getting me closer to seconds. I don't know how many seconds are in a year, so I can't use that. But I do know how many uh, days are in a year, which is smaller and on the road to seconds. So a year is 365.25 days. That 0.25 is um, over four years. It'll add up to an extra day, and that's where leap day comes in. So we have 365 days is my new unit up here. So this right here is a conversion factor. And my years will cancel with years with days left on the top, which is not where I want to be. I want my final unit to be seconds. And a lot of the time I will write my unit that I'm looking for at the end just to like help my brain work through the road of how I'm going to get there. So days is not quite seconds, so I'm going to have to put days in the bottom to get them to cancel again. Um, and truly, this could be any amount. The idea here is that we want to get closer to seconds. So I would not say that there's seven days in a week because a week is getting further away from seconds, not closer to seconds. So um, getting smaller here, I'm going to say that one day is equivalent to 24 hours. And again, these two values are equivalent and that is what makes them the conversion factor. So these days will cancel with that day. I have hours left over. Hours are not seconds, so I'll have to keep going. Um, let's try one hour and 60 minutes. Again, two values that are equal to each other with different units, that's fine. There we have 60 minutes. The hours in the yellow will cancel with the hours in the red. 60 minutes is still not seconds, but I do know that one minute is the same as 60 seconds. And what's perfect here is that my final unit is seconds. 
I have gotten to seconds, so I'm going to move that right there. And my minutes here will cancel with the minutes here. This is my final conversion factor. And this kind of green color is my last conversion factor. And that's everything. So I am ending on seconds, which is exactly where I want to be, which means that I've set up everything perfectly. My unit that I'm looking for wound up on the top. What I'm going to do now is the ugly part that nobody likes, and that is to multiply everything in the top, multiply everything in the bottom, and then do top divided by bottom. Now, the bottom here is really easy because I have picked conversion factors, luckily, where the denominator of each of them was one. So one times one times one times one times one is just one. The top here, I'm gonna need a calculator for. Um, I don't have any units left except for seconds. So my final answers units will be in seconds. Um, so let's hit the calculator. I'm getting 4.7 times 10 to the eighth seconds. Uh, my number was ridiculously large. So I just put it in scientific notation with the help of my calculator. Um, two significant figures. Remember the 4.7 is the only thing that is counting as significant figures when we do scientific notation. Um, it's actually 4.73364 times 10 to the eighth, but that was too much. So I just <laughs> cut it up. So we're at 4.7 times 10 to the eighth seconds are equivalent to 15 years. And this is something that we will do in chemistry quite a bit with stoichiometry. I will do some more examples of that later. I typically don't do my stoichiometry problems in this sense, simply because it's a lot to keep track of. Um, some people really prefer this. I, I like the ratio method. I, it just works better for my brain. So it really is going to depend on your preference. Um, The thing with the stoichiometry is that a lot of the time you have to cut to the side anyway to do some molar mass calculations. So I would rather just have my molar mass calculation with the particular step. Um, so what I mean with the ratio method would be taking each of these and like cross multiplying them and doing one, doing them one step at a time, which for some people just makes more sense in your brain. For me, I'm one of those people. I do know that people do like this method though, because it's really quick and concise. The amount of side math and paths that you can take in chemistry just makes it a little more difficult for me to kind of track in this. I like to see it stepwise. So um, that's all. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below this video. Subscribe so you don't miss our next practice session and I'll see you there. Bye.